Now, I've been impressed in the past from watches offered from MMI, from their turret to their turret marine chronograph to their linen dial nor lights, and this is going to be the first GMT offering from them. Is it worth the hype of getting a watch from MMI watches? This thing comes in at about 400 bucks, and is it worth the $400 price point that they're offering that? Hey, I'm Chase. This is All Things Random, mostly watch reviews with some random stuff sprinkled in between. It's going to be a detailed review right off the bat, then the pros and cons, in my personal opinion, at the end of the video. If you like content like this, hit the subscribe button. It's free. really does help the channel, and let's hop into it. Now, MMI has always pleasantly surprised me with the type of materials they use. This is made of 316L surgical grade stainless steel, which is unnecessary. Normally, 316L stainless steel is the industrial standard. That's what they expect everything to be at, except they chose to upgrade to the surgical steel, which is just a little bit better. Now, one of the things that I do love about MMI is their finishing. The case is brushed, but they do offer chamfered edges along the side. Now, this allows it to have a greater pop, and it is far more pleasing with the eye. It just shows that they have a higher quality of standard when it comes to their watches. They didn't have to do the chamfered edging, but they chose to anyway. They could have done this as a high polished watch throughout, but instead they chose to do a mixture of both. So it's really nice to see that in a watch of this price point. Now this watch comes in at 40 millimeters in diameter. The lug to lug is gonna be 47 millimeters. The case thickness of this is gonna be 13.6, and the lug width of this sadly is gonna be 22 millimeters. Now the bracelet, is a solid, again, 316L surgical grade stainless steel bracelet as well. And it has H links throughout, which are kind of nice. Brushed on the top, brushed along the side. And you can see that they offer screw pins instead of push pins. This is really good to see. It does have a fold over double pusher safety clasp. It's milled underneath. However, the top part of the clasp is pressed but it does offer five points of micro adjustment. That's also good to see. Now, since we're already at the back here, let's talk about the back of the watch. You can see that, of course, it does have solid in-links. The spring bars are quick-release spring bars, so that's good to see. So it's very easy, if you want, to remove the bracelet to put a different strap on this watch. It does have a screw down case back, really good to see. You can see that it says Sapphire 316L stainless steel, turret GMT 300 meters, and inside it does have an NH34. We'll talk about that in just a moment. The dial on this watch is a horizontally brushed dial, applied baton indices with both printed 24 hour track along the outside, the date wheel along the center, which is indicative of MMI. That is their special thing, is the way the date is. You can see right here, there's a little red pip or a little red square down here at the 17. This is how they've done their date along all of their watches generally outside of like the Norlite with the linen dial, every watch has this internal rotating date. Instead of having a date window at the three or four o'clock position or at the six, instead they have this. Each one is printed and each time the date moves over. Let's go ahead and just go into the date function. You can see that it ticks over and that is how you read the date. The crown is a screw down crown. Again, 300 meters of water resistance. It is loomed, so it's really cool to see. The bezel is a ceramic bezel insert, loomed as well. The batons on the inside also are loomed, double baton at the 12, double baton at the six, single batons all the way around, and these, of course, have Swiss Superluminova throughout on the indices, on the hands, on the bezel and on the crown. So this thing is gonna look great in the dark. You see here, there's an orange GMT hand. One of the things that I do like about the presentation of the dial 
even though it looks like there's kind of a lot going on, there's really not. The batons are the standard indices. You can see this is still a dive bezel and this is a unidirectional dive bezel. One of the things that I'm gonna tell you that I don't like about this bezel right off the bat is the fact that it's a little stiff, which will kind of lighten up as you use it more. I'm not a big fan of this coin edge. The coin edge doesn't allow that much grip and I know that the moment it gets wet, I'm not gonna have any grip at all, especially if I have hard grip right now when my hands are dry. Um, it's just something I would change. I would have these maybe a little deeper, a little more aggressive so it's easier to grip, especially if this is gonna be a 300 meter diver. Now, because it is a 300 meter diver and they have the unidirectional bezel out here, it's not a bi-directional bezel with a 24 hour marker like you'd see on basic GMTs. Instead, you can see along here, there's a one, a three, five, seven, nine, eleven, all the way around this minute track, which is the GMT 24 hour printed along the outside minute track. You rarely ever see that. I'm glad they did this. Now, one of the issues is the fact that you can't really have a third time zone, which is what you would do with the bi-directional bezel. That being said, still happy to see that they offered a GMT function, kind of a GMT function with this watch. Inside is the NH34 movement, which is hacking and hand winding, which is really good to see. Pull the crown out once, and it goes into the date function and the GMT hand function. You rotate, what is this, counterclockwise, and it selects the date. You can see it moving there. The date is being selected. Rotate the other way, clockwise, and the GMT hand moves along the dial, so it can also be adjusted. Pull it out again, again, hacking, you can see that second hand stopped, and now I can adjust the time. Everything functions well. Now one of the things that I say about a true GMT, this is not a true GMT, this is more like a second hour hand, a hand that is slaved to the standard hour. That's okay, you won't see really true GMT hands under 400 bucks. Um, a true GMT hand functions so that if this is, if, my, if, if it's five o'clock right now, what I would do is I would take this hand and I would put it towards my home time zone. Then as I'm traveling, what I would do is I would pull it out. Normally the hour hand here for a true GMT is what moves. The GMT hand stays where it's at and then I'm able to move this hand around. So my standard time is going to be, you know, my local time zone is gonna be the standard hands, the standard hour hand, standard, standard minute hand, and then the slaved hand or the GMT hand would be my at home time. You can't function it that way when it comes to things like this. So you have to kind of reverse it. So you'd have to, I mean, go through and reset everything up. So if it is one o'clock right now in my home time, let's get everything set up for that. So let's go and set this up for my home time. Let's just say it's one o'clock. Let's get this set up. So one o'clock and I travel forward, what I'm gonna end up having to do is reset everything. Let's say I go ahead three hours. Well, you can see right here that it's still slave to it. So I would have to then adjust this back. And now my home time is one o'clock and my local time is three o'clock. Slightly annoying because it's not a true GMT, but it does offer a second time zone function if you understand how to work it. Now on the outside, the dial is protected by a three millimeter air coated on the underside sapphire crystal. Always good to see because it remains scratch resistant, not shatter resistant, mostly scratch resistant for life. Ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal, horizontally brushed dial, the case finishing is done beautifully. 
Again, this is a slight chunkier watch, even though this is only 13.6 millimeters thick, it just feels it just feels more substantial. You may like that, you may hate it. I tend to like my watches a little heavier because I know it's on my wrist. I like to know that I have a watch on my wrist. Some people love titanium watches because they just disappear. I'm the opposite of that. I don't like that even a little bit. And here's the loom. You can see that there's two different types of loom. There's both green as well as blue. So you can kind of see distinctively what's what. Bezel, of course, and then the outside. And of course, that loomed crown there. Just a little extra detail on the watch. Now, real quick, let's get into the pros and cons of what I think this watch offers and kind of fall short on. Well, some of the pros, I think they're offering a lot of bang for buck at $400. Now, one of the things that I've noticed in the past when it comes to MMI watches is the finishing on the watch. They have both brushed finishing as well as chamfered edging. Now, I like what they're doing, especially under a macro lens. I think they take a lot of care to pay attention to the details that are important in a watch, especially for someone like a watch collector. Now, you see these watches out there that are homage watches that are just stamping a design from a, another watch brand, something like Pagani Design, and then they just put that design on a watch with their brand. MMI is not doing that. They're creating their own designs, their own unique finishings and characteristics that are specific to their watch brand. That is something I really love. You don't see that much in the micro brand market. So for me, that's a massive pro. Another thing that's a massive pro is the detail on the dial. Again, this is a GMT function. However, it's also a dive watch. So the pure fact that they put a ceramic bezel insert, which is nice, on the bezel so it's still functioning as a dive watch, unidirectional, then they decided instead of doing it along the unidirectional bezel, instead of putting a bidirectional bezel, they instead put the 24 hour dial along the chapter ring. Of course, this only allows it to have two time zones as opposed to three with a bi-directional sliding bezel. That being said, it's still nice that they had some forethought into that. They said, okay, we're gonna give you an extra hour hand that acts as a GMT function, and instead of taking away or, or adding what a lot of watch companies do, which is they'll add a 24 hour bezel insert on a unidirectional bezel. Instead, they said, you know what, let's keep this a dive watch. Let's allow it to still have the dive functionality, but print the 24 hour track on the inside of the chapter ring. I think that is a lot of planning and forethought in looking at this watch as a whole. Now, what are some of the cons of the watch? Well, you just heard me mention it. It's not a true GMT. It's more like a second hour hand that kind of gives a slave functionality um, as a 24 hour marker to the hour hand. This is because a true GMT, as you're functioning the watch, allows you to move the hour hand only as you move forward and move back through time zones. And the last thing I have to say about the cons is going to be the clasp. It is a fold over double pusher clasp. It's fine, right? And it's what you'd expect on a more budget watch. It offers a pressed clasp on the outside with milled underworkings so that everything is solid and fits great. It does have five levels of micro adjustment. On a watch today, I'd really like to see on the fly micro adjustment, but for a watch around 400 bucks, this is exactly the standard you get. It's done exactly the way you'd expect. So there's really no complaints. It's just something that I wish watch companies and micro brands would do just a little bit better. The clasp is just the last thing on the list that needs to be checked off if you're gonna have a good all around watch. The finishing is great, the dial is great, the movement is decent, uh, the bracelet is okay, and then it tapers down into a class that just makes it feel like a cheap Seiko, in my opinion. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you like the MMI turret GMT? I'm a huge fan, really wish I could have tossed it on a chase strap, but I can't, 
because the lug width is too big. That being said, I think they are offering a lot of bang for buck. The finishing is spot on. Really love the look of the dial and it is its own brand. It's not copying another brand. Anyway, if you like videos and videos like this, again, hit the subscribe button. It's free. It really does help the channel. Hit the like button helps the algorithm, hit the notification bell because for some reason people don't get notified of my videos because apparently watch reviews are controversial. Just kidding, they are not. And I'll see you in the next one.